Welcome to week two of the SAS Bootcamp. In this week's content, I'm going to share with you guys the agenda of the topics that we are going to cover for this week. These include adding columns or creating variables for both numeric and character variables, conditional logic using an if then else statement and a select when statement. And then we will learn about how to manipulate rows or delete rows, how to manipulate or delete columns, and then how to manipulate a character variable within SAS. And then to wrap up this week's content, we are going to talk about SAS date, how to create and manipulate SAS dates. So without further ado, let me jump straight into SAS Studio. So because we are, we want to get into the, this video's topic, which is adding columns or variables. Before we get into that topic, I do want to do a quick recap of some of the things we learned in week one. In week one, we learned about libraries, temporary and permanent libraries. And we talked about how SAS comes with a whole host of preloaded libraries, including the work library, which is the temporary library, where all the files are deleted as soon as you close SAS, and a whole set of permanent libraries that comes built into SAS. And then we also talked about creating custom libraries, including this class library that I'm showing right here on the screen, which was created using this piece of statement right here. This SAS code created this class library, which actually has access to all the files that you need as part of the SAS bootcamp. We also learned last week about how data steps work. Within SAS, we learned that every data step has three statements. There is a data statement that has a new data set name, just like that. Uh, excuse me, I'm going to make that an underscore. Finish that off with a semicolon. We learned there is a set statement that ends with a semicolon also and has a data set name. And we learned that the data step concludes using the run statement followed by a semicolon. Today, we are actually going to learn about what you can include in between that set statement and run statement and how you can add columns in that portion. So let me begin by first opening a data set that we are going to use today. This data set is called Boats. This data set should be available to you through SAS Studio if you use that library name that I displayed on the code earlier. So the Boats data set actually has 10 rows of data and it has five columns of data. These five columns include a name of the boat, the port where that boat is docked right now, what type of power that boat has, if, is it powered by power or is it powered by sail? What is the type of boat, which can be CAT for catamaran, YAC for a yacht, and SCH for a schooner? And finally, what is the price of the boat? So this information is located within the boats file. So what I want to show you guys now is how to call on this data set using the set statement. If you will remember from our last week's content, we first write the name of the library, which is class period, and then the name of the data set, which is boats. And then now I need to give my new data set a name. I could have called it new data set, but I want to call it boats underscore tax because in this data set boats underscore tax, I want to create a new variable that talks about how much tax is owed on each individual boat. Now, there are a few ways I can do this. Adding a column or creating a variable can be done very easily for numeric variables simply by writing the name of the new variable followed by what that variable should be equal to. For example, I want to create a variable called tax and I want to set it to be equal to $10. If I want to do that, I just write tax equals 10 and I finish it with a semicolon and that's it. And if I select these four statements of code and I hit execute, you will see that my out, let me check my log first. The log says that uh, the 10 observations were read from the class dot boats and the data set work dot boats underscore tax has 10 observations and six variables, so it worked. So let me go to my work library because if you remember in our data statement, we did not specify what library to save this file under which means it's saved under the default library work. Let me open my boards on this tax, and you will see right here that the tax variable has a value of 10 for every single row. Now we did not specify that the tax variable had to be different for every single row. So right now it is 10 for every single row in the data set, which is what we want. So that's fine. We just add, added a column to our data set. We went from five columns to six columns or five variables to six variables. Now, there are ways to make this a little more complicated. Let's say you don't want to include a tax equals 10, but you want your tax to be actually calculated using data already within that data set. So I could do this. I can say tax two, which is a different type of tax, equals 
the price of that boat divided by 10. So you can use simple mathematical terms to do mathematical equations within SAS to calculate these new variables. So now my tax two variable will be one tenth of the price of each boat. So let me run this. And let's look at our log. And you'll see here that there were 10 observations from class.boats, work.boats underscore tax has 10 observations and seven variables. Now it has seven variables because I created two variables in this code, the tax variable and the tax two variable. So let's go look at my boats underscore tax data set. You'll see these are the five row columns that were already in the data set. And when I scroll to the right, there is my tax column and my tax two column. The tax column is 10 for every single row because that's how we wrote the code for this. The tax two column you'll see is exactly one tenth of the price column. So 62, 6.2, 29.95, 2.995. That's exactly this divided by 10, which is the uh, mathematical command that we fed into SAS. So creating a column or creating a new variable in SAS can be really, really simple. And this is true and this will work as long as the variables that you are creating are numeric variables. But variables in SAS don't always have to be numeric. Let me go back and talk about what that means. This is our boats data set that we were just looking at. This price variable is numeric. I know it is numeric because there are numbers in this column and because the numbers are all aligned to the right side of the column, which you can see right here. Uh, for some of you listeners who may be common who may be uh, used to using Excel, you'll, you'll recognize this formatting where all numeric variables are aligned to the right side of the column and all character or string variables are aligned to the left side of the column. So you'll see here name, which is a character or a string variable is actually left aligned. So is port, locomotion and type. The two new variables we created, tax and tax2 are both numeric variables and they are both numbers that are aligned to the right side of the column. So when you are creating a new variable, it is really easy to create a new variable as long as it is numeric. If you are creating a character variable, you have to play by slightly different rules. Let's say, for example, that within this data statement, I want to add a new variable, one that is called flag. And this variable, I want to show what uh, I want to show what country's flag is each boat flying on top of their mast. And let's say that the country's flag that I want in all of these boats is the Spanish flag. So I'm just going to write Spain. And I'm going to conclude my statement with a semicolon. And that's all I need. Now you will observe that this is different from the numeric variables because for the word Spain, I added quotes before and after the word itself. Now these quotes could have been single quotes. They could have been double quotes. And either one would have worked just fine. You just have to stay consistent with what you opened with and what you closed with. But as long as you are consistent, whatever is in between those quotes gets added to that new variable. So let me run this code and see what it looks like. As every time I run a code, I go check my log, make sure there are no errors or warnings. You'll see there are only blue notes in here, which means the code ran. And then I'm going to go open my data set in my boats underscore tax. We have the five variables that were originally in the file. Let me scroll to the right. There are my two tax variables and there's my flag variable. The flag variable is Spain for every single row because that's the way we designed it. We made sure that every, every row had the flag Spain in it. Uh, one final thing to observe when looking at these data steps is that within a data step, you can add as many statements as you want, as many as you want. There is no limit to how many statements you want to add or how many times you just want to hit enter. If you just want to hit enter and have some empty rows so you can format your code to look a little more cleaner, you are welcome to do that. It does not affect how SAS reads or executes this data set. Um, that concludes video one. Uh, let's pick up back in video two and I will talk about conditional logic next.